you. I am yours truly, Evangelist Deborah Geary. I'm here today coming to you with the Ministry of Real Issues. I want to welcome everybody. I thank you for tuning in on today. I pray, I believe, I trust that something is going to be said that is going to bless you and your home, your heart. Amen. You know what? There is much I want to cover. I want to continue with help. I have a heart. We're talking about issues, issues of the heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. The spiritual heart. Amen. I'm going to recap what I went over. Just talk about what I went over. And I'm going to go ahead and continue with some of the new stuff. Okay. This has taken me a lot longer than I had anticipated. Father, I want to pray right now for each and every one that is watching the ministry on the day. I ask that you meet them at their greatest need. Father, I ask that you step in, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that they may know that you really are God. I ask that you hear their petitions, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you open up their hearts, that they may receive your engrafted word and let your word take free course in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, I need you to do me a favor. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to be coming a lot with scripture. I'll be giving a lot of scripture. I'll be giving a lot of scripture to back up where all of this is coming from. But if you have your Bible, go with me real fast to Proverbs chapter 4. I believe it's verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4. I believe it's verse 23. Amen. And before, while you're turning there, I'm going to go ahead and go over some of the stuff that I had already talked about in the last two shows. Now, if you missed it, if you need to get caught up on help, I have a heart talking about the spiritual heart. I'm not talking about, you know, somebody that may need a heart transplant or anything like that. That is a serious issue, yes. But this time I'm talking about the seat of the emotions, your spiritual heart. You can go back. I'm on YouTube. You can watch me on YouTube. Just, to, just type in Deborah Gary. It should be there. Any show you want to watch, um, it should be there. This is part three that I'm giving you now. The recap of what I've already talked about is, <clears throat> as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your reaction is based on the condition of your heart. A lot of what we do, a lot of what we say, a lot of our thoughts, a lot of how we act out is based upon, it is stemming from the issues that are in your heart. I talked about the reasons that I feel like God looks at the heart. What does that really mean? I also discuss how the mind is connected to your spiritual heart. I also talked about how the will is connected to your heart. I also spoke about how your emotions are connected to your spiritual heart. I also talked about how the troubles of your heart are enlarged. God's got to bring you out of your distresses. That's what, That was the cry of David out of uh, Psalm chapter 25, verse uh, 17 and 18, how we want the Lord to look on our afflictions, to look on our pain, because sometimes it just mounts up. It gets to be too great, how we need to hear from God. We, I talked about that. I also talked about what's with the broken heart. I talked about how significant it is when you have a broken heart. Amen. We gave, I gave answers for that too. I also talked about um, how to forgive. If you've got a broken heart and it's still from a, a second or third party, I talked about uh, some things that uh, you and I can do to forgive uh, the person or the persons uh, that may have caused our broken heart. And then I also talked about six stages of heart disease. Six stages of heart disease. As I get ready to conclude, I'm going to go back and tell you where a lot of this information, of course, a lot of it comes from the Bible, but I'm going to go back and tell you where I've gathered a lot of my data from, okay? All right, now, you should have Proverbs chapter 4, coming from verse 23 in the King James Version. You will find these words. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep your heart, amen, from all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of heart. Uh, for out of it flows the issues of life. Look, let me tell you something. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. You've got to protect your heart. The Bible says, uh, because out of it flows, keep your heart with all diligence. In other words, keep your heart with all perseverance. 
protect your heart. Go for it. Know that you have done your best. You have put forth your best foot forward to guard your heart that you have done, you are doing, and that you have done everything that you can do to guard your heart because out of it are the issues of life. That daily routine, that thing that you get up to every day, that way that you're walking out your life, it is stemmed from the issues that are in your heart or, or what may not be in your heart. Amen. So you know what? Guard your heart, y'all. The Bible is letting us know, you know, it is from our heart. Guard it with due diligence because out of it, from the heart, you know what? It's the way we live. How, how are you acting today? How are you treating your brother today? How was it at work today? What kind of mood are you in? What were you thinking? Have you ever could be in a good mood? You know, things are going well. You know, are you happy and you up? You know, things like that. And then... You'll have a thought. You'll think about what happened yesteryear. Or you'll think about what happened, you know, a few weeks ago. Or you'll think about, you know, what so-and-so did, what Bubba did. Or you'll think about what Sue, Sue Allen did. You see what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, your mood just changes. You know, you're like, you're looking around and you're like, wait a minute. What just happened? What just happened? Because circumstances, situations, those thoughts that you are carrying, it is stemming from the heart. And before I go on, and I, I, I'm gonna finish up with this Proverbs 4, 23, but I just wanna follow the leading. Before I go on, you know the biggest, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, you, oh my God, you know the biggest problem that a lot of us have from issues of our heart? You know what the biggest thing is? Unforgiveness, unforgiveness. Amen. Here it is, you know, still harboring something that happened yesteryear, y'all. You see what I'm saying? Look, so-and-so, you know, they going on with their life. They're happy, not thinking about you. Amen. Praise the Lord. They're doing well. Amen. And you sit here, you know, bitter resentment. Hmm, I'll show them. Well, you know what? Guess, guess whose heart needs a reality check and i guarantee you it's probably not the one that you're mad at or bitter get or bitter gets or have unforgiveness okay so daddy may have raped you when you were a kid you may have been molested when you were young by your uncles even boys you may have been molested by your 80s okay these are issues that may be in your heart you may have gotten fired and you didn't expect to lose that job you were on top of your game you were top match and you knew that things was going to work out you knew that you were going from here to here because you were top notch. You clocked in on time every day. You were the first one there on the job. While people were giggling and cackling over here, you were on your job. And next thing you know, you find yourself in a meeting and you got a layoff. Amen. And these are issues. These are issues that piles up in our hearts. And next thing we know, we go, oh my God, from on high. Next thing I know, next thing we know, we go going home. We upset. You know, the diligence of our heart is coming out. Those issues, it is coming out. Now, it's okay to get angry. The Bible tells us to be angry, but yet sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. It's okay to get angry. Jesus was angry. Jesus got to the point. He was so mad that he went and overturned the tables. Amen. We're going to get angry. The Bible says that God remembers that we are but dust. We are dirt. We are a compilation just shaped nicely, but we are a compilation of nothing but dust. So you know what? Chances are we're probably going to get angry. Chances are we're probably going to have issues in our heart, okay? But you have to guard it. You have to guard your heart. You have to put forth your best foot, your best effort to protect your heart. If you have unforgiveness in there, you have got to go. You have got to seek God. You have got to ask God to grace you with, with that so you can forgive whoever 
A, B, C is, you have got to forgive them, ask God to grace you so that you can forgive them and go on and move on with your life so that all these open doors that God may have for you, that they will start to open up. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you know what? And I pray to God, Lord, help me. God is doing some things. I thank you, Lord. God is doing some things, you know, but it is hard. It is difficult. Amen. To get up and to minister, preach, pastor, and I know a lot of people are doing it. I have done it. When you have to get up and your heart is wounded. I know, but you know what? You have to persevere. You know what? You have to push. You know what? You have to be about your father's business. You know what? You have to deny yourself. You know what? You have to guard your heart. You know what? When you start speaking, when you start ministering, you'll find these issues. You'll find them starting to, they, they will start to uproot and to start to come out. But let me go on. Oh my God. Holy Ghost, just continue to have your way in Jesus' name. Be careful of what you are thinking because your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts, they run your life. Guard your heart even more than treasures because your heart is a treasure. It is a treasure. You have got to guard your heart the way, you know, say for instance, like you've got a diamond and this diamond is worth I don't know, $2.5 million. You know, well, chances are, I don't know, just saying, chances are you're probably protecting that diamond. You're probably guarding that diamond. You're probably polishing. You probably got it in a safe security box. You're probably checking on it every day. You're probably checking to make sure everything's okay. You see what I'm saying? Your heart is a treasure. We've got to do the same thing with our hearts that we would with something of most valuable to us because the Bible has declared that our heart, that it is a treasure. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me go on. What does it mean to guard your heart? What exactly does that mean? It means to protect yourself from negative influence from toxic people. My God, that'll preach all day long. Let me go on. To protect yourself from negative influence, from toxic people, and from evil behavior. To shield our minds, to shield our bodies for what is not life giving. You know, when um, Mother Mary, you know, when she was pregnant with the little Lord Jesus, you know, she was, may have been like six months pregnant or something like that. I don't know. And then Elizabeth, I'm sorry, I got it backwards. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm too excited. When Elizabeth was pregnant, she may have been like six months pregnant or something. And then when Mary came and spoke to her, the baby leaped. The Bible says that the baby leaped. You know what? Get around people who is going to make your baby leap. Amen. Not those that can cause a miscarriage. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Get around those that are going to make your baby leap. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me go on. Your heart is extremely valuable. I think we just talked about that. Your heart is the source of everything that you do. Your heart is the overflow of your thoughts, your words, and your actions. The Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Not just, not just is the mouth going to speak, but the mouth is going to speak it in a way that it is in your heart. If you're feeling bitter, not only are you going to speak bitter things, but you're going to speak it in a bitter way. If you have hatred in your heart, not only will you speak hatred, but you will speak hatred in a, but you will speak words in a hateful way. You see what I'm saying? So guard your heart, y'all. If your heart, if it is unhealthy, it can impact everything else we do. Let me repeat that. If your heart, if it is unhealthy, it can impact everything else that we do. It, it can, be careful, it can threaten your family. If you have an unhealthy heart, it could, it could threaten your friends. If you have an unhealthy heart, it could threaten your ministry, your career. If you have an unhealthy heart, it could threaten your legacy. 
So it is important that we guard our hearts with due diligence, with every effort, putting forth our best foot. Amen. Here's the thing, y'all. Our hearts already is under constant attack. Already. Already. Our hearts are under, is under a constant attack. You know, some of us, especially, you know, uh, I hate to say this, not, not, this isn't exclusive to this race, but I know for the African American race, you know, a lot of our black men, especially, are suffering from hypertension or high blood pressure. You know what I'm saying? Our hearts is already under a, a, a constant attack that we've got to be careful of. Depression can affect our hearts. Obesity can affect our hearts. You know, that's why the doctors try to put them on diets and do things, you know, to try to get rid of some weight because the obesity can uh, 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 affect uh, the weight of your heart discouragement or disappointments these things are already at war with our hearts amen let me go on it is very important you guys i can't stress that that we guard our hearts now i want to ask a question and i'm going to talk to you why would god say guard your heart why is it so important that god that jesus would come to us and tell us to guard your heart. First of all, let me say this. The heart, it signals the brain. And it sends uh, 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 signals to the brain more than any other way around. It send, Listen, if your heart sends incoherent signals, if your heart sends incoherent signals to your brain, what happens is this can inhibit... It can stop, it can diminish uh, cortical function, which in turn can cause poor choices. Let me read that again slowly. The heart, it signals our brain, and it sends more signals to our brain than any other way around. The heart is coming to the brain. It sends, if, if, if it is sending an incoherent signal because you know you got depression in there because you got toxic emotions in there because you've been wounded because you've been hurt because you are carrying um obesity you are carrying uh high blood pressure whatever okay what happens is it will send an incoherent signal to the brain which can inhibit your cortical function, the cortical function is that that can make you feel good or not feel good. But if it's inhibiting your cortical function, what's going to happen? You're going to start to make poor choices. Amen. And I, and let's just, let's just keep it real. You know, how many of us, you know, before you got saved, you know, Lord saved you and all this stuff, you know, and you hear people and they wake up, you know, and they like, who is this person? Who's this person next to him? You know, because they may have been drunk, you know. Well, you know, it was a choice. Why were they drunk? What made them get all that tequila or whatever? What were they feeling that they felt like they had to have that? What was stemming deep down inside that they felt like they had to have all that? Now, you know, you got poor choices. You know, you're in jail. You know, you're the manslaughter. You hit somebody, you know, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, why would we make a poor choice? People that may have go out after, you know, uh, um, teenage girls or whatever, you know, and they feel like they just want to molest them, you know, poor choices. Why? Because of what mama did, because of what daddy did. And it's in harboring and it's infiltrating into their heart and their cortical function that's going to the brain. It's minimized, it's low, and therefore they are making poor choices. Are you with me? Are you with me? Hang with me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me go on. Oh my God, I'm running out of time and I still got so much. Now, when you are in a coherent state, when you are in a coherent state, that means the right state of mind, okay, what happens is you improve cognitive function in making better choices. Uh-uh, I'm not going to do that today. I ain't going to jail today. Yeah, I want to hurt her. Mm -hmm. I really believe me. I want to slap somebody. But you know what? Mm -mm. Put my flesh in check. I ain't going to do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you are in a coherent state, 
Amen. You improve cognitive function into making better choices. So you know what? Applaud yourself because if you ain't have to hurt nobody, <laughs> if you ain't have to slap nobody, <laughs> okay? If you made it, you may not have had but 10 cents in your pocket, but you didn't go stealing or anything like that. You know, anything. You know, it's still worth applauding yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me go on. Number two, why I feel like God, was, why I feel it's important that God would tell us to guard our hearts. Because number two, when you are stressed, when you are dealing with anger or negative emotions, amen, this signal that travels from the heart to the brain that we just talked about that inhibits better cognitive function and you're not able to think clearly. And what happens after that? You're not going to be able to remember a thing. You're not going to be able to remember a thing. You're not going to be able to make decisions. Y'all, I remember a while ago, this was many years back, minimum 15, 15 years ago, I was living in San Antonio, Texas at the time. <clears throat> and I remember I was at church, and I remember something hurt me so bad at church. I mean, it was overwhelming. And I was like, no freaking way. This kid not be happy. I don't believe this. And so, you know, I was going to the car. I was getting in my car. And people was coming to me. And they were asking me this. And I couldn't remember. I literally, seriously could not remember. It was something simple. You know? And I mean, I had all kind of uh, a cortical function that was inhibited, okay? Because I was so overwhelmed from the stress and the thing that happened that I could not have believed. I mean, I felt like somebody literally just put a bullet in me or something like that. You know, it was overwhelming. And y'all, I couldn't think. I was making bad decisions. I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? I did everything but or except guard my heart. Amen. And I, I, I'm grateful. I don't do that too much anymore. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to be more conscientious of not letting anything like that happen again. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we've got to guard our hearts from stress, from toxic emotions, even though a lot of the factors, they may not be stemming from you. Uh, 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 but you know what, though? You've got to be the therm th thermostat and not the thermometer. You've got to set your temperature at one setting and leave it there and not going up and down. And believe me, y'all, there's <laughs> some people that can vouch for me on that, okay? I've had my ups and downs moment. Let me keep it real. Number three, why I feel God would say to us for us to guard our hearts. Mark chapter 7, verse 21 to 23 says, Out of the heart of men proceed evil, evil thoughts. The inward part of our being can be wicked. It is a corrupt nature. It is our carnal mind. It is an evil treasure. This is the part that can defile the man. For out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. But you got to guard your hearts from these things happening. It can only happen if you allow it to come in. Remember I was just said just momentarily ago to be the thermostat and don't be the thermometer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me go on while I feel like God would say for us to guard our heart. Mark chapter 10 and verse 5. The Bible says for out of the hardness of your heart. Do you see why God says it's very important for us to guard our hearts? Do you see why he would make it imperative for us to guard our hearts? Over here in Mark 10 and 5, the Bible says, for out of the hardness of your heart. You know what? Listen, we have to allow that. Something had to have happened that allowed our hearts to get hardened. So what are you saying yes to? What are you agreeing with? What are you allowing? What are you coming into covenant with that you have allowed? Oh my God, for most. Oh my God. That you have allowed it to come into your heart or my heart and allow it to fester there. And now because it has festered there, you know what? The What's coming to me, and I'm just going to go with it because it's what's coming to me. It's like cement. It's like cement. You know, they got these trucks. 
you know, you see the big wheel trucks and they constantly turning and turning and turning. They can't stay still. You know, it's like cement. You know what I'm saying? But if you if you let it fester and you let it sit there in your heart, what's going to happen? It's going to become hard. It's going to become hard. Amen. But, you know, like the trucks keep moving, you've got to constantly get it rotated and get that thing up out of you. Not only just get it up, but get it out. Amen. Guard our hearts. Guard our hearts. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known. Amen. This right here, you all, can coincide with Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 that says, take no thought for your life. In other words, don't be anxious in the cares of this world. Don't be anxious in having distracting thoughts. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what? Don't be anxious. You know what? If, if you're going to believe, don't worry. If you're going to worry, don't believe. Be anxious for nothing. I didn't say that. That is found in the word. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Why do why is this telling us to be anxious for nothing? Because this is another way that God is protecting. This is another way that God is protecting us to guard our hearts. Amen. How much time have I got? Just a few minutes. Let me, I'm just going to have to go quickly here so I can wind this up. Let me tell you something. God already knows. I'm talking about Abba. I'm talking about our father, Abba, Jehovah. God already knows our needs. He already knows our wants before we even bring them to him. He's God. You know, things have already been settled. Our future has already come to pass in the eyes of God. All we're here to do is to live out that that's already come to pass in the eyes of God. Let me go on. God already knows our needs. He knows our wants before we bring it to him. But he wants us. He wants us to petition him anyway because when you give him your cares when you give him your worries when you give him your anxieties when you give him your anxiousness he is going to give you his joy he is going to give you his peace it is a fair exchange you know it's, it's just a fair exchange you know give him that you know that is bothering you give him that that is burdening your heart give him that weight that is in your heart so that he can come in and he can give you that joy and he can give you that peace and me too amen praise Lord, I got to go on. When you have a positive input, when you are thinking positive things, it gives a positive feeling and it can bring stability. Amen. Which in turn, which in turn can benefit the body. Amen. And can help us to perform in the way that we're thinking. And next thing you know, you'll find yourself feeling better. I've got to move on. I've only got one or two minutes left. Philippians chapter four and verse eight tells us, to think on these things which are honest, just, lovely, good report, pure. The Bible says, think on these things. I wonder why. I wonder why. Think on these things. Amen. You know what? Don't think about what Bubba did. Don't think about what happened with, with Papa Smurf. You know, think on these things. What's good, lovely, just, good report. Amen. What does God have to say about you? Is that the end of the story in God's eyes about you? Do you really believe that? And if you say yes, and if you feel like you really believe that, then you know what? We need to get back down in that heart. We've got to get rid of some of that hardness. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's got to get in and uproot it. Amen. He's got to bring it out of you. Amen. God's got to what's called break up that fallow ground. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you something. God's story about you is positive. There is and expected in. I've got to stop. Oh my God, I can't believe I didn't get far with this. Let me tell you something. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for every heart that's wounded, for every heart that's broken, for every heart that's hurting, for every heart that 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 feels like, you know, giving up. Father, I ask that you come in and do a divine intervention. I pray that you come in and do a great exchange for each and every one that is listening under the sound of my voice. And Father God, I ask that you turn that thing around quickly. Lord, in Jesus' name, uproot 
any toxic emotion out of our lives in the name of Jesus. I love you. I thank you for being with me. I desire your prayers. I'm never, ever, ever above anybody's prayers. I always ask for prayer. Pray for me. I love you. God bless you. Bye now. Bye.